Don't run E85. It is bad for your car. Don't do it. It's going to pull moisture into your gas tank. It's going to corrode everything. It's going to gum up your fuel lines and clog up your injectors. You're a fool if you use E85. I was racing cars when you were shitting diapers. I know what I'm talking about. You run some pure gasoline with an octane booster like lead, and that's how you make the most power says every person who doesn't understand chemistry, which is pretty much most car people. Let's be honest. We're not in the cars because we're smart. We're in it because we're kind of dumb and we like to spend money on making things go fast. But sometimes car people are pretty smart because while well, the engineers who make these things have to be smart. Therefore, some of that information trickles down into the common folk with that, we kind of learn a thing or two over the years on how to make things faster. With that, information also gets uh, twisted around a lot as it makes its way from one person to the next. And by the time it gets to the end of the road, most people don't know what they're talking about. And there's just a lot of bad information. So E85, should you run it? Yeah, absolutely you should. E85 is awesome. No, seriously. Like, that's no joke. E85 is probably one of the best things to happen to car enthusiasts since the turbocharger. It's really one of the keys to making good, safe power cheaply. And I'm all about being cheap. E85 is hard to beat when it comes to a fuel that can support a lot of power. I mean, most racing fuels still can't even match what E85 can do for making power. Flash in the 110, it picks up to 521. E85 comes in and this son of a gun just makes more power everywhere. It's crazy. That's because E85 is a blend of, well, you know, your gasoline and up to a certain amount of ethanol. Well, ethanol is a alcohol and alcohol fuels, man, they are magic. Burning alcohol is like burning unicorn piss. It's like some of the best stuff you can put in an engine for combustion. Of course, there's a lot more nerdy, scientific-y, more popular videos out there that goes way more in depth than this video ever will, but this is for the common folk, the layman person who needs to have a better understanding. Plus, I have a good amount of followers who maybe would like to know a little bit more because there's a lot of bad information. Trust me, it's taken me a while to even grasp the concept of why E85 makes more power. Here's commonly the answers you'll hear on why E85 makes more power. If you go and ask an average car guy why E85 makes more power, usually the answer is, oh yeah, because it's higher octane. But it being higher octane alone doesn't necessarily make more power. It allows the engine to run more boost and more timing, which will make more power, but the fuel itself doesn't make more power that way. So then that can't be it. Oh, well, it helps cool things down. Okay, that is actually one of the benefits of E85, but that isn't the sole reason why either. And most commonly, that's what you hear. It's high octane, it cools better, and that's it. No, that's not it. That's only part of it. That's only one third, if that, of the whole equation why E85 makes more power. Most people don't understand because it is kind of complex. We're talking about chemistry here. Let's be honest. Most people don't know crap about chemistry. In fact, I don't really know much except what I've just been studying to try to understand E85 and methanol and other fuels. With that said, let's get into a couple of misconceptions about E85, and then we'll get into the real good stuff. Okay, number one misconception about E85, it has less energy per gasoline. That's only partially true. Less energy per gasoline by volume. So if we're using the same amount of volume of gasoline and the same amount of volume of E85, yes, the gasoline will have more energy released from it, but we don't use the same volume of E85 because the fuel has a different density. It has a different molecular structure. It, from a chemical standpoint, requires a different amount of it than gasoline. You cannot compare the two fuels by volume because it just doesn't work that way. So when someone says, oh yeah, well E85 has less energy than gasoline, 
doesn't understand that that's why we have to inject more E85 than we would have gasoline. Now, the other side of that is when you have E85, uh, you need to inject more of it. Now, the thing is, when you inject more of it, does it make the same amount of energy than the gasoline or does it still make less? I'll get into that here a little bit in the video. So on to the next misconception is E85 will ruin your fuel system. Here's the thing, rubber doesn't like anything alcohol. It will soften it up, it will help, it will eat away at the rubber, it will just make it deteriorate. It almost makes like a gooey, like black gunk that will travel through the fuel system. Of course, if that makes its way into a fuel filter, into a uh, injector, yeah, it might mess things up. It's not the fuel itself that will do that unless you leave E85 in a vehicle for an extended period of time. You ever watch E85, you ever just pour a little bit out in the sun, let it dry? It will leave a sticky varnish. That is what will accumulate in a car over time. And we're talking about span of months. So if you have a car, a track car, or a, a car that doesn't get driven a lot on E85, maybe you'll have problems over time. But if you're constantly cycling through tanks of gas, like if it was a daily driver or a car you run every weekend on E85, chances are you're not gonna have a problem with the fuel itself gumming up the system. If you have rubber in your fuel system, that's where you're gonna have to worry about. Thankfully, most modern cars have plastic fuel lines now. It's because the modern fuels we use are 10% ethanol, and manufacturers realize that. So most of your fuel systems now utilize plastic lines, at least for most of the fuel system. There might be some smaller rubber lines here and there that are a lot easier and cheaper to replace than a full fuel system. So that's the only other caveat. E85, because ethanol is an alcohol, will eat away at rubber. But as long as you have the right fuel lines, you're fine. As long as you don't leave E85 in your car for an extended period of time, you're fine. And even then, you can put a fuel stabilizer in there, run it through the system, and it generally will make the fuel last even longer. Unless you just completely neglect your vehicle, you're never going to have a problem with that. So with that said, we can get on to the good stuff now. Why does E85 make more power? There's a few reasons. It's not just because it's a higher octane. It's not just because it cools better. There's a few other reasons too. So we're going to go ahead and firstly address the elephant in the room. The fact that uh, by volume, gasoline makes more energy, which is true. Gasoline has 43 and a half megajoules of energy per kilogram of fuel where pure ethanol is 26.8 megajoules per kilogram, and E85 falls in about 29.2. So yeah, if we're comparing the same amount of fuel, apples to apples, you'll see that E85 makes less energy. So how does it make more power? See, now all fuels have a stoichiometric value, meaning there's a certain ratio of air and fuel that a particular fuel will need to make the most power. For gasoline, we're about 12 and a half to one, 12 and a half parts of air to one part fuel. E85 is 7.4. So when we run E85 at the proper stoichiometric ratio for power, something interesting happens. E85 actually releases more energy than gasoline. Imagine that. So gasoline would be somewhere around three and a half megajoules per kilogram of air, where E85 comes out to four megajoules of kilograms of air. So it will actually release more energy per the same amount of air as long as you inject the correct volume needed. And that's what most people don't understand. There's another reason why E85 makes more power. And that comes down to the benefit of ethanol being an alcohol. Alcohol fuels are oxygenated fuels, naturally. When you hear some of the very popular racing fuels that people use, Q16, MS109, 260GT, all these different fuels are oxygenated. That's one of the reasons why they make more power. That's why they're racing fuels. It's not just because they're higher octane. It's 
because they're oxygenated fuels. The benefit of oxygenated fuels is the fact that the molecular structure of the fuel carries its own oxygen. Different fuels have different amounts of them, depending on how it's formulated, but they carry their own oxygen. Well, think about it. In an engine, you need three things, air, fuel, and spark to make power. We always try to make more power by cramming in air via forced induction, via nitrous, you know, adding it in chemically. The same thing happens when you have an oxygenated fuel. There is more oxygen added chemically suspended within the fuel itself. Therefore, when it ignites, there's already oxygen in the fuel that way. You don't need as much oxygen coming into the engine to make the same amount of power. You just need more fuel. Ethanol itself is actually 35% oxygen by weight. That's crazy. Methanol is actually closer to 50, but we're focusing on E85, ethanol. So ethanol is 35% by weight, which comes into why we add about 30, 35% more volume of fuel than gasoline. So when you already are cramming more air in via boost and you have more oxygen in the fuel, you can see why you need a whole lot of it so you don't burn the house down. So then we get into the next thing. Okay, well, fuel, it makes more power because it cools. That is true. Definitely one of the big reasons why ethanol E85 makes more power than gasoline because it cools the combustion process. But then you think to yourself, well, this is counterintuitive, right? Because more heat means more combustion pressure. More combustion pressure means more power acting down on the piston. So if we're taking heat away from the combustion, then we're taking away the pressure too, right? Mm, not completely. That's not quite how it works here with E85 because it happens during the phase change, not during the chemical reaction of combustion. So basically when the E85 changes phase, from liquid to vapor, it pulls heat away. Then it ignites and that heat comes back. By the time the next power stroke comes around, you don't want more heat in the combustion chambers. So when a cylinder is on its next compression stroke and you fire in that E85, well, as that injects into that very hot combustion chamber, it phase changes into a vapor pulling all that heat away. So it pulls a lot of heat away before it ignites and creates heat again. So you don't get that as much with gasoline. Therefore, you retain more heat in the combustion chamber per cycle, per combustion cycle. Obviously, that means things get a lot hotter, a lot quicker. There's not as much heat being pulled away per cycle. Now, the exact number is actually quite interesting. The latent heat vaporization of gasoline is anywhere between 380 to 500 kilojoules per kilogram where pure ethanol is 900 kilojoules per kilogram. Holy crap, 900, that's almost double. That's kind of crazy. And that is why you can run more boost, more timing to create more pressure. More pressure creates more heat, creates more power. You can do that safely and not completely melt down a piston because twice the amount of the heat is being pulled away per cycle, per combustion cycle, per cylinder with E85. Like I said, it's like unicorn piss. With that said, I hope that helps clear up some of the misconceptions with E85 because I had to take a lot of time out of my busy day to read through a lot of the garbage on the internet and better understand what is really going on with E85 and why it makes more power. No, it's not just unicorn piss. It really comes down to chemistry, which most people don't understand or are not willing to understand because it can get quite complex and let's face it, we're too busy trying to make power, right? Okay, we can't, we can't be bogged down with chemistry. It's not what we do. So I think that's gonna wrap it up here. Let me know what you think, put your thoughts in the comments. Otherwise, I'm gonna wrap it up here for the video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share with everyone you know. If you wanna see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep a look out for next Cars Created video.